To finish off this series on the brush creator, I want to go ahead and talk about the concept of resolution a bit in the context of working with our grain. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and choose a splats PNG for our current grain. I'm going to hold down shift so that we're going to be able to see a straight line stroke of this. And you're going to see that we get the exact same splat of this grain every single time. Now, if I wanted to change that so this was randomized, I could come over here and choose random splat. And every single dab is now going to have a random position of that grain. So we're going to get a lot of variability for a stamping type brush. And that's something that I do recommend that you enable if you're doing any type of splatter brush where you're going to want some variation in the individual stamps. This is very, very useful for that purpose. Now, if you remember, if we come over here and we change the scale down, we're going to be able to set the scale down in such a way that the grain is going to be smaller in relationship to the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and make a mark in a straight line so that you can see that we now have smaller splats. Now, it's important to understand that this does not change when we change the size here. And so if I go ahead and make a smaller size brush and I go ahead and make the mark, you can see we get the same size splats. If I come over here and I increase the size of that and I hold down shift and make a mark, you can see we get the same size splats. So when you think about the scale here, you have to understand that it's in relationship to the potential size of the shape. What I mean by that is the full range that you see here when you're going from a size of one to a size of 100, it's taking the size of 100 and it's calculating the size of the grain in relationship to that. And again, if we click on this, you can see that's the grain that we have. So you can see how this image here is going to be fit into that circular as we have a size of 50. Now, it's important to understand that this is not going to work as far as resolution is concerned. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and clear this off, hold down shift, and I'll make a straight line stroke. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and enable the DPI option here. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and make a straight line stroke. And what I want you to see is that we're going to be getting a very different size. And the reason why is because when we have it set this way, it's going to take into account the size of the document. So I turn this off for one second. And then I come over here to our crop tool and I choose to enable image size. And I'm going to go ahead and make this document significantly larger. So I'm going to set it for 400 and I'm going to say, OK. So we're going to have a much, much larger document now. And as soon as it's done doing that, you're going to see we have a larger document. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this fits on screen. And you can see now that my size of 100 is much smaller in relationship to the size of the document. And I currently have the scale of 50 still. So if I hold down shift, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark over in this neck of the woods. So I'm going to make a straight line stroke here. And you're going to see that this size of 50 that we do not have the DPI enabled is going to be significantly smaller than what we had over here when we had the same size of 50 without DPI enabled. So we're losing our consistency in terms of the size of the grain as we change the size of the document. However, if I come over here and I enable the DPI option and I go ahead and hold down shift and I make a straight line stroke over here, what you're going to see is that we're going to end up with something that was the same as the size of 50 on the lower resolution document. So the idea now is that if I leave that enabled and I come over here and I come back to the crop tool and set this down to something like say 100, and I go ahead and hit OK to accept that value. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is fit onto the screen like so. And now I'm going to go and see that my size of 100 is significantly larger. But because I had the DPI enabled and I go ahead and hold down shift, what you'll see is that it's going to remember that size that we had here. And it's going to be giving us the exact same resolution that you saw at a size of 400. So there's no difference. It's going to consistently give us those same marks. And if I come back over here and I change my resolution again back to the original size of 200, and I go ahead and hit OK to accept that value, when it's done resizing, you'll see that again, my size of 100 is back to the original size. So you can tell that we're back to the original size. But because I have it set to 50 and DPI, it's going to give us the same type of texture that we had here and here. So if I hold down Shift and I make a mark going beside this, you can see it's the exact same size. So if you want a consistent size, changing resolution of your document, here it's 400, here it's 100, here it's 200, but they're all going to have the exact same size grain. And this is going to give us a lot of consistency as we're changing the resolution of our document. Whereas if we do not have this DPI checked, then what's going to happen is that if we set it for a size of 50, it's going to be consistently different based on whatever the size of the document is. So 
It's really important that if you think you're going to be working with this brush across multiple resolutions and you want to get consistent results, my advice is when you're creating the brush, go ahead and enable the DPI so that you will consistently get the same size results no matter what resolution document you're working on. If you do not have this enabled, you're going to be constantly having to change the slider in order to make sure that you get similar results. And that's not something that you necessarily want to do. So by enabling this, you can set it. If you're happy with it at one resolution, you will always get the same results no matter what resolution your document is. So that said, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and clear off this document. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a decent splatter brush. So I'm going to come over here, reduce the spacing, increase the spacing jitter and the scatter, increase the opacity jitter, increase the size jitter. And I'm also going to increase the angle jitter. And I'm going to go ahead and say follow shape rotation. This is going to rotate that grain so that as it's going through its angle jitters, it's going to also be angling the grain as well. So we're going to get a lot of randomization here. And you can see that we end up with a very nice splatter brush. So if you wanted an irregular edge, you could simply come over here and change to one of these that has an irregular edge, like say the shape round. And you're going to see that we're going to be getting something that's not so perfectly round for the individual stamps. And you can see this yields a very nice splatter effect, but we could use this with any type of stamping. So the idea again is that you want to use the random splat when you want to randomize the grain position on a per dab basis. You want to use the DPI if you want to set the resolution as it currently is in whatever document you're currently working on and then lock it there so that if you change the resolution of the document, either up or down, and you use the same brush, you will get the same size grain. Now, you, of course, you'll have to change the size of the overall shape, but the grain itself will maintain its same size across multiple different resolutions of a document or different documents.